Well, I've got my guests here, Dean and John from Meeple Town, and we're talking spicy hot games. But I know nothing about this game, so I am all ears. I am ready to believe you. Tell me about Nevada City. Oh, all right. I'll start with this one because this was one, y'all, that I, as soon as I saw it came out, first of all, I'm a huge Rio Grande Games fan. In fact, on our last podcast, or when it's releasing tonight, is we did our top five Rio Grande Games of all time because I'm a huge fan. So I see they come out with this, and the box is beautiful. I'm like, you know. I like that cover. Even though yeah. I'm a mechanic guy, I do get drawn in by covers. I do get drawn in by art. And so I was really, really hype on this game. Um, a couple points, a couple interesting things. So you're building a town and you're building buildings with cards. So it's a worker placement game. But as the game progresses, there you see the cards. As the game progresses, new worker placement spots are opening as people are building them. If you see the characters down there on the bottom, one of the interesting pieces of this game is those characters have um, a certain amount of action. So when it's your turn you send your character with however many actions. There's one there with four. Some of them have one, some of them have two. And you send those out one at a time. So you just do all of your actions and it goes to your next player. And then also those, all the players have skills, which is interesting. So if you're building a building that requires two masonry, if they have a masonry skill, you only have to pay one. Ah. So that's kind of cool. And then um, also when you build the building, you don't have to pay to use it. So if it's a building that produces lumber, you can get lumber for free for the rest of the game. And if Dean wants to use it, you got to pay me. Um, so that new Bedford is one of my favorite games of all times. And it's got that mechanic. Sometimes you build a building, not necessarily because you want to use it. I want you guys to use it. That's right. Uh Oh, I love that mechanic. Yeah, I do too. That was, that was, I love that too. Do you have anything you want to say about any of that Dean? Yeah, no, that's, that's the gist of the game. Um, but (laughs) we were both kind of meh overall on this one. Unfortunately, we both had really, John, especially John, especially had really high hopes for this one. And it's, it's really long for one. So a two player game takes about two to two and a half hours. Uh, I saw man versus meeple said a three player game took him about three and a half hours, the first game. And so about an hour, a player roughly, or maybe even a little more. And then they have these event cards that, can really hose you they can be really uh one of them for example is you play a poker game but what happens is you have this pot of money you put in a dollar and then the the board game puts in uh six dollars or something like that so you're playing for eight dollars and you john draws a card and i draw a card and whoever has the highest card wins that pot of money and i'm just like that's not poker that's war you know like it's 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 so there's some really frustrating event cards like that can you mitigate um, the, what happens to you with the event cards? Not in that, no. Uh, some of them. No, some of them. No, they're not all like that. Some of them are. You, you know, everybody has to pay taxes on things, or um, you know, players might take wounds, which means you have to take off one of those little cylinders off your character, so you have one less action. But and some of that can be mitigated too. But the ones that can't be mitigated can just be so frustrating. Like flip the table frustrating. And I'm not that guy when I play games. But So chat crew, what you heard was the classic turn, right? They started out, the game is beautiful. We had so many <laughs> cool mechanics. It was so mo. It was terrible. Like what? Yeah. It's, <laughs> hey, Steven, yeet. Yes. That is your, that is your Meeple Town cred. Yeet. yeet. Show, no. his, show his cred. <laughs> we learned what yeet meant during a podcast episode. <laughs> So, uh, Tom, so are those player screens and do they is there hidden information during the game? No, that is literally the mark of what player you are. That giant thing serves no purpose except to say I'm the yellow player or the blue player. That's hilarious that you thought that it was a player screen though, it because it, because they are so big. That's so really big. funny. I was so disappointed when I found out it didn't do anything except for yeah. the people who I was. So just judging by the artwork and by the pictures that I got from the publisher, I was thinking this was sort of like a Western Legends because I heard poker. I heard, you know, moving around stuff, but I don't really see a board. I, I'm not really getting a Western Legends vibe at all. It's not. You no, know, it, it's more of a just a kind of a worker placement game. Right, Dean? You building know, up buildings like, like Western Taylor, buildings. buildings are coming, some more buildings are showing up. And no like sandboxy that. thing where you're going around robbing trains and doing things like that. Right? No, you're basically building buildings and fulfilling contracts and building things on your farm to score victory points. It's nothing, nothing crazy. Um, it, you can't see it from the picture either, but the board, I think, I didn't measure it, but I'm pretty sure it's four feet long. Yes. 
Um, a buy, like four, four, by, four by one. Yeah, <laughs> that would make Chris really? Strain happy because he loves those big boards. But he says event cards are a designer trap. Christian mm. says it feels like you're creating a theme, but you often end up creating player frustration. True. Sounds like what you guys experienced. Yeah. It is, but I like I like event cards in certain games, like like Starfares, uh, Catan Starfares. I like the event cards in that because you can kind of prep yourself a little bit for them. In this game, you can't really prep yourself. You can somewhat for some of the event cards, but some of them are just you know total randomness. So I play a lot of a, a game called Ulm. I don't know if either one of you have played Ulm. Mm-hmm. If you if you like dry your dry themeless euro, dry soulless themeless euros. That's you know that's oh my John favorite. would love it. Then. Yeah, John, Ulm. <laughs> check out Ulm. In fact, John, okay, I will. If you're on BGA, we'll play it together, man. I don't know okay, if you're yeah, on. No, you're no, a no, cup. But what I like about Ulm. Steve doesn't like the event cards. They're called tower tiles. As you build up the cathedral, you got to deal with this event card each round. But what I like about it is they tell you what's coming up. Sort of like in Tricarion, where you're Mm. dealing with the prophecies that are coming. You see them coming. So it's your fault if you know this card is coming up and you you haven't taken care of yourself. It's true. If if that's not what's present in in, uh, in Nevada City. You can kind of do that here, though, Dean. Oh. And, yeah, we didn't talk about that in the podcast. There is a worker placement spot that lets you look at the cards and then rearrange them. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Oh. Yeah. And we should have maybe used that a little bit more. I'm, here's the thing. I actually – I'm usually the one that doesn't like randomness. But I don't mind the uh, the event cards as much in this game. Dean really doesn't like them. I'm, I'm just whatever. So there you go. Somebody just made a good comment about the the Orleans one where you can um where you can see, right? Like you see what it is and then it happens at the end of the round. I like that too, where you, where you can prepare for it through that entire I round. I agree with that. That's yeah. a good point. That's good. All right, so Nevada City, we're not getting thumbs up on that one. You know, it's it, it the, I BJ, I want a lot really like this game. And so does Dean. There were some yeah. mechanic pieces that are so fun, some really interesting decisions. Overall to me it just feels a little rough around the edges. And it plays too long, man. Uh, I, it's it. I can play a two and a half hour long game if I'm totally engaged the whole time. If I'm playing terraforming Mars and all these things are changing and we're seeing all this in this game, I just it just feels kind of like you're doing a lot of the same stuff. You're getting some new buildings, but they're just making things cheaper. You're still doing the same thing over and over. And by an hour and hour, if it was an hour, hour and a half, I would say thumbs up on this game probably. But when it goes into that two two and a half hour, it's it's okay. Something for what it is, yeah, for what it is. Mm-hmm. Nevada City, if you like beautiful games that play too long, have too much randomness, and you can't <laughs> mitigate the damage from the event cards, this is the game for you. <laughs> it's not That's that quite bad. the pitch. <laughs> it's not that bad. It really isn't. But I can see the designer sitting across from, uh, I don't know who runs Rio Grande, but it used to be, uh, oh, I can't think of his name now, uh, Jay, Jay Tumbleson. So he's, he's looking across Jay. It plays too long. It's it's got, it's got you can't mitigate the luck. <laughs>